Acid-base reactions, an introduction to arrow pushing to describe reaction mechanism. While we need to think of chemical reactions as interactions between atoms and molecules that are moving, dynamic processes like this are difficult to recreate on paper. In this seemingly simple animation, the blue electron-rich species with a lone pair is attacking an electron-poor red atom with the green group breaking off to avoid breaking the octet rule. If we consider, as a starting point, the interaction between an electron-rich base B with an acid HA, we need a method to describe their dynamic interaction that is easy to understand that works quickly on paper. Here, the base and acid are the starter materials that begin as stable compounds before they are mixed together. The base then donates its lone pair to the antibond of the HA bond, temporarily destabilizing the system as the materials transition towards products. The transition state is a theoretical picture of what the system looks like at the highest energy point. Completion of the BH bond and the HA bond breaking results in products, with the original lone pair now being a bond pair and the original bond pair now a lone pair. For reasons to be developed, the products are often more stable than the original starter materials. That's a lot of information that has to be transferred on paper without using an animation. In any acid-base reaction, we need to describe how an electron-rich base interacts with an electron-poor acid to convert to the corresponding conjugate acid and conjugate base. We need to remember that orbital overlap is involved and that the non-bonding lone pair orbital from the base needs to overlap with the antibond of the HA bond to get the reaction going. Sir Robert Robinson came up with the curved arrow to describe these interactions, which is now the universal method for describing dynamic changes in organic reactions. These arrows are now a convention, like driving on the correct side of the road. The arrows must start at an area of high electron density and go towards an area of low electron density. Arrows are used to describe individual bond making and bond breaking events in chemical reactions. In polar mechanisms, one arrow will describe one bond being formed or broken. We use electronegativities and lone pairs to identify electron rich areas. And arrows will tend to flow in the same direction as electron density is transferred. The arrows show up in over 100 mechanisms, so getting comfortable with their use early is important. To consider some examples of how to apply the curved arrows, we begin with a carboxylic acid reacting with sodium hydroxide. The products of this reaction are the sodium salt of the carboxylate anion and water. Firstly, we need to identify dipoles and charges to work out which reactant is electron rich and which is electron poor. Here the hydroxide anion is rich and the proton on the carboxylic acid is poor. Then we add the curved arrows to show the electron rich base donating to the electron poor proton and the conjugate base breaking off to complete the conversion. In the next example, we have the lithium salt of an amine reacting with an alcohol. This results in the proton transfer to give the amine and the alkoxide salt. For the starter materials, the anionic nitrogen is identified as the electron rich center and the proton on O as the electron poor center. The bond making curved arrow then begins at the electron rich N and is pushed to the electron poor H. The second bond breaking arrow describes the electronegative O taking a pair of electrons to avoid breaking the octet rule and completing the process. In this third example, a terminal alkyne is treated with sodium amide. The result is the sodium salt of the alkyne along with ammonia. The electron rich center is readily identified as the anionic nitrogen atom while the alkyne proton is known to be weakly acidic. The bond forming arrow therefore begins at nitrogen and goes towards the alkyne proton, with the bond breaking arrow showing the sp hybrid carbon picking up the electrons from the CH bond that breaks. Try to use the same process on each of these situations to work out what the products will be and how the curved arrows are applied to describe the reactions.